Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and record this video and hopefully you're able to hear all the sound. I got the the uh, professional mic hooked up. I did a sound check and it is a live mic and it's working just fine. So I hope that you can hear me. So the topic that I was going to cover tonight, and I'm just going to give you a little taste. Uh oh. All right. So it may be working too, too well, but give you a little taste on um, what we were going to talk about and talking about um, sex, lust. Okay. Let me turn down the microphone. There we go. Hopefully that'll stop the whistling. But talking about sex, lust, and um, and living. So um, one of the things I want to talk about today is uh, living a, a single and dealing with intimacy. And I am still, see now I'm getting feedback. So I'm going to try to turn it down. Good, I, I did a sound check. So I've got the professional mic on. And so it's a live feed and it may be a little bit too loud. Um, so the topic is sex, lust, and living. And so I wanted to start tonight because I I actually have lost 30 minutes dealing with sound. And as a single woman, a single male, um, we have to realize that as we get into relationships, the more we give when there's no commitment, uh, the less we get in return. So we want to make sure that we um, do uh, several things uh, in a relationship. So one of the things that I, I'm actually reading for my latest book, Being a Happy, Healthy, Holy Woman. I'm not sure if you can see it. I just love when everything's backwards. Okay, so I wanted to talk about um, the types of, of, of men and uh, people that you will meet and where you will meet them. And so the Bible talks about meeting your Boaz. And Boaz was the one who met Ruth while she was glazing um, in the field. And so I know a lot of people, are, if, you're, if you've read my book, it's hilarious when it talks about the type of men that you will meet, okay? So, um, and then we have to realize when you are single, um, and I'm getting feedback and I apologize. I went from no sound to, woo, I got sound. <laughs> so let me work on this master volume and volume and see where we get. But we have to look at ourselves and value ourselves as men and women. And I'm specifically talking to women tonight about how to value um, what your God-given um, ability and, and what God wants you to do as you begin to get into relationships. So one of the things that I wanna talk about is making sure you have a healthy heart. And I talk about three different types of heart. You know, God tells you to guard your heart. Uh, beloved, may you prosper and be of good health as your soul shall prosper. So the happy, healthy woman is normally yearning to be everything that she can be first. You know, so when you think of that, think of seek the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything else will be given unto you. You know, I've traveled the United States and abroad, first of all, sharing with women around the world uh, to wait on God and to study his word so that they can know themselves first before they enter into a relationship. And, and salt and pepper had a song, let's talk about sex. And one of the things that, that the Word of God talks about is saving ourselves um, for marriage and, and what a marriage is in uh, the Bible. It talks about Adam and Eve. That's where it starts with a male and a female. So we have to realize um, if we don't know ourselves, how are we going to be able to give ourselves to others? And the, the best way to get to know who you are is to know whose you are. You know, so if no one's told you that God loves you more than anybody else in this world, 
you will never understand that. Uh, one of the things that God has shown me in this season because of so much divide is that God is the truth, the way, and the light. And one of the things he's, he, he says that he loves the sinner. So he says that we're all sinners saved by grace. There is not one sin in this world that is more important than the other except one is when you denounce Jesus as being the Christ. That's called blasphemy. And that's the only sin that's not uh, forgiven. So we have to realize that we all may sin when you get into too much anger, you cuss, you fuss, you steal, whatever. A sin is a sin. And I know that to God, there is no life that's greater than another. And so this is where we get into self-righteousness and thinking that our uh, our way of life is the best way of life. And the only life that I know is the best is the word of God. But the key is his grace is sufficient. All we can do is get better and better at being what he has called us to be. So singleness is the biggest test of womanhood because this is where you begin to see others and other relationships and people introducing you to relationships, you know, with me um, uh, sharing and, and, and being a, a performer for the NBA way back in my 20s, you know, I'm, I'm uh, hitting 60 almost. But back then, you know, there was a lifestyle where you saw a lot of things, you saw adultery, and even in the church, you can see adultery, you see uh, different lifestyles, you know, so uh, different uh, sexual orientations. And so I remember back in the day when it was okay to say um, a sexual preferences and today's uh, world, that is not uh, uh, how, that's not uh, politically correct per se. So a sexual or orientation. So there are many women like you who are very serious about their walk with God. And they're not attending church to find a man, okay? And then even uh, in our church, because everybody is accepted, you know, come as you are. One of the things that I know is when I have people uh, that are in the LBTQ uh, community, and I think I missed an acronym in there, uh, where they come and confess at the altar. Um, so only God can change us, nobody else. And so that's where when we hear the word of God, uh, we get better. For example, I remember when my skirts were way up to my thigh, because that was normal. You know, the the Ali McBeal days. I don't know if some of you remember what that was, but that was when uh, suits had mini skirts. But once I started hearing the word of God, my, my skirts got a, a little bit lower, amen? So that comes with time. So the key is, uh, and look, it talks about, first look at the speck in your eye before you start pointing out what's wrong with others. So this is what this is. So, you know, we're getting serious about God and not attending church just to be a Jezebel. In other words, just looking, uh, you know, at someone to get, whether it's the pastor, whether the pastor is male or female, amen. But uh, this is for the lady in waiting, as I call it. How many of you are out there waiting for the right person? You're waiting for your person. You're waiting for the love of your life. Amen. Uh, or how many of you are confused that, that you've never seen love? You don't know the different types of love. You know, so, uh, you know, I remember looking at the soap operas and everybody was jumping in bed first and getting a divorce second or not getting married at all, sleeping with whoever they can find. And so if nobody's ever taught us about what sex is, because sex can ruin a relationship if it's not the right person and it's not done in order, as it says in uh, the word of God. So I want to give you a challenge and I'm going to try to type without this mic falling down, but at least it works. Um, Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10. And I'm going to, so we should become Proverbs 31 women and, and the men should become Proverbs 1821 men or 1822 men. So in Proverbs 1822, it says a man that finds a wife 
finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. And then it also talks about uh, Proverbs 31, uh, uh, verses 10 through 30. It says, Lemuel talks about this woman. She is a businesswoman. She owns land. She provides profit for the household. She's talented. She's gifted. She's highly thought of, dresses well, educated, and she's not a loose woman, but a holy woman who knows how to care for and love a man. And so the key is we have to realize that there are steps into getting to understanding how to be a happy, healthy, holy, and whole woman. So in Colossians chapter three, it shares that we should seek the things that are above first. And Paul talks about being unmarried in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 25 through 40. And he talks again about marriage in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 33. And then the next few chapters will deal with being single, married, um, and ultimatums. Or I should so so we're dealing with, you know, learning how to love yourself. And then the key is once you get in the relationship, how do you keep the relationship? So as a pastor, one of the things that people ask me is, you know, do I um, marry uh, couples? Do I marry same-sex couples, et cetera, and so forth? One of the things I want to be clear about, I have not married heterosexual couples because you have to go through sessions of premarital sessions. And what happens during those premarital sessions is whether you're same sex or heterosexual is the fact that you learn that there's a lot of things you don't know about that person before you say, I do. So I've had couples break up during the, um, the sessions of the premarital sessions because they find out that they are only in love with what they see have no idea what this person is about. Like, for example, they'll find out that this person may be addicted to sex or addicted to pornography or have uh, a double lifestyle, meaning that they love that person and they love several other people. <laughs> okay. So where there is some, uh, or, you know, all kinds of different lifestyles. So um, the, the, the Bible is very clear that we must choose our relationships um, carefully. Amen. So, you know, if you are married, it becomes, believe it or not, more difficult to stay in a relationship. So I want you to get ready for your mate. We're going to pray about being a happy, healthy, holy woman. Uh, we're going to pray about if you're single, being single. We're gonna pray about if you're ready to get married and why you need to save yourself for marriage. Um, you know, in my book, I talk about 15 di different types of, of men that you're going to meet, okay? So there, there is uh, one of the things that um, studies have shown uh, that God wants to prepare you for marriage, but um, no woman, especially a holy woman, needs to sleep with a man or live with a man to pr prove her love to him. Because um, if the plan is to be with that person forever, you don't need to practice marriage before you said, I do. Because that is an easy way just for him to say, I don't and I won't and walk away. And you've invested all of your time, all of your body, even investing and in living together, paying the bills, and then that person can just walk right out of your life and you have nothing to show for it. Amen. So yeah, there's a small percentage of men that will marry you, but the couples that I've counseled have still had issues because they practice marriage before they were married. Okay, so we have to realize that um, most of the marriages born out of the lust of the flesh, meaning that all there was was sex. Can we talk about sex? The lust of the flesh, which is common law marriages, are built on just romance, okay, which is called eros love in the Greek. So that's when you see that person 
It's like you're just so physically attracted to them. And God made it that way, that we're supposed to be attracted uh, to the opposite sex. But the key is Arrow's love is just like a roller coaster. It's like you're hot for them one minute. And then once you get in an argument, you may be cold for them the next. So you have to know that Arrow's love throughout the relationship, if you say until death do us part, then what's going to sustain the relationship is the agape love, which is the God unconditional love. Now, I'm not talking about someone that treats you like you're the uh, uh, the end of a baseball and they hit you with a bat. That's domestic violence. That's not unconditional love. But uh, but uh, we have to realize that unconditional love lasts forever. We often wonder if if we're out of touch with yesterday and forever because of things that are going on, you know, people are really saying, I don't believe in marriage anymore. But the key is what I'm seeing as a pastor and as someone that has talked to thousands and thousands of women uh, for over 20 plus years, women want love. Women want someone to love them. They want uh, their love reciprocated. They want to spend their lives with someone. And so we have to realize, and this is an old cliche, you know, the world's way is not the truth, but God's way is. And we have to realize that love can be everlasting. But most men believe this, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? So ladies, don't give up the milk, okay? Keep it, don't give it away. Uh, we need to understand that if you are in a godly re relationship, with the true man of God, he will not try to defile your body. He's not going to want to focus on sex, but he's going to focus on getting to know you. With lust, that's all they see is the arrows, the physical attraction. And so then I'm going to stop here because we've been um, uh, you know, dealing with the technical difficulties today, and you can rewind this and watch it again. Thank you for hanging out. But I want you to begin to look at God has promised us. There is no shortage of men. There's no shortage of women. But we have to start at being a Proverbs 31 woman, being that happy, healthy, holy woman, looking at God's word and what does God's word say that we should be, um, not be uh, offended. You know, and then the first thing that we have to see in order to see God's way, we have to ask ourselves, are we truly born again? Have we given our lives to Christ? Do you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you believe he died on the cross and on the third day he rose again? And so, um, you know, so God made us erotic. So so Eros, a love really means erotic love. So he made us that way for a reason. But we have to realize that um, we are made of flesh. And how do we stop? that temptation of just having sex with whomever we want, whenever we want. And how, so that's where we get into lust and just sex, where then when we start looking at living, it's like, what kind of life do we have left over? Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I'm just reading some of the comments. Thank you, um, Ms. Ms. Violet. Uh, uh, Miss Emily Violet, for your kind words, and it says, thank you so much for staying positive through your technical difficulty. Beautiful words. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so we want to try to get to unconditional love. So I want you to take time. So your homework is Proverbs 31 uh, verses 10 through 30. And let me know what you think about that, and then we're going to continue to talk about this because we have to realize that most of the time when we look at sex or you know we look at someone that may have wealth or something else then we begin to give more of ourselves and then what do we have left in life amen so the key is allowing God to help us to find the person that he has for us and remember God loves the sinner, but he hates to sin. None of us will ever be perfect. All we can do is continue to strive to be the best that God wants us to be. And with that, I'm going to pray the happy, healthy, 
holy woman daily prayer so that you know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Let me see if I can find this prayer. Help me, Holy Spirit. And I found it. So I have several prayers. And the only one that I'm going to pray is the one um, for your daily, uh, daily prayer, number one. And then there's one um, that uh, the single woman praying for a husband. So when you're ready for that one, I'll touch and agree with you with that. And then there's a prayer for married women to grow with their husbands. So I'm going to pray the abundant season prayer for goals and your destiny tonight. Okay, thank you, Heavenly Father God, for loving us. We ask that you give us more purpose in our life. There is so much that we want to accomplish and do for the sake of pleasing you. We know that all things work together for the good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. In accordance with Romans chapter 8, verse 28, you have given us life through you and we shall have life more abundantly according to John 10, 10. Lord, we are asking that you continue to use us in your way and your will. We will rejoice in your good and satisfying plan for our lives and our future in the present moment and grant us more sense of direction and purpose in accordance with Proverbs chapter three, verses five through six. Father God, reveal to us what seems to be hidden uh, or lost in our lives. Oh, Father God, and draw us near to you. In the name of Jesus, Father God, let us resist all efforts of Satan to misdirect our lives that you, Lord Jesus, have planned for us. So we have resisted Satan, therefore you, he must flee from us. So Lord, we ask that you remove all wickedness and deception out of our lives. Remove those who only focus on evil and destruction or possess negative thoughts of us and our abilities. These spirits do not have a place or hold in our lives in accordance with 2 Corinthians chapter 3, um, uh, chapter 10, verses 3 through 10. Excuse me, chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. That's 2 Corinthians. Help me, Holy Ghost. Also, allow us to listen to correction because obedience is better than sacrifice and rebellion is like the spirit of witchcraft. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 through 23. Let us be obedient so that every stronghold that is holding us back from all of your promises and all of your purposes shall be moved from our lives. I ask that you direct and reveal my path, our past, as it is our due season, our abundant due season. God, grant us the wisdom to discern the plan you have charted for us so that we can be obedient in your holy will. So I'm asking that God help you to know the difference between saving the, the erotic, that sexual desire for the mate, the person that God has chosen for you so that you will not get into lust where lust is only for a moment. It's that up and down and before you know it, the, the relationship is over. Bit, bop, bam, thank you, ma'am. Some of you have heard that expression. And then you can look over your life and say, okay, I've handled this, this sexual tension, this sexual um, orientation, this sexual motivation, this sexual whatever, the way God has shared as me being a Proverbs 31 woman or a Proverbs 18, 22 man. God bless you and keep you. And remember, Thursdays, the pantry is open. So make an appointment if you need um, pantry items, 937-275-3770. Um, and then we'll discuss more, a little bit more on this topic on Saturday at 11 o'clock. Again, I apologize for 30 minutes of technical difficulty. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Remember, stay safe. Uh, they expect a spike in COVID. So we do not want you to get sick during the spike. Um, wear your mask, practice social distancing, stay well, and also go vote. God bless you. Thank you.